recording. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, like a good neighbor, the Metro Hampton DC Road DJ's penalty number five, here. buddy neighbor, two minutes for interference. Time of the penalty, 6.39. That's so it's buddy neighbor. I have William neighbor. I have me. William neighbor. Well, won't you be my neighbor? And across the line, Travis Reese. Coming in on goal. He had two power play goals last night. Reese around the world. Over to the near side boards. Dropping it back over to Cameron Smith. Smith up top. Rempe winds up. Takes a shot. And goes right in to Keelar. I'm reminded of that Sean Gregory goal that John Rempe released from the point. A rebound finding its way to Gregory last week against the Atlanta Knights. He's trying to recreate that scenario I can see out there. Absolutely. Use that big frame of his. And a shot. I mean, Rempe with that shot. Yeah. Here it comes through again. Keeler out a save. And it's steered off the side. And now we might have a two on one coming back the other way unless Bagfeld can get back in time. He does show. The Whalers kill time. And it looked like Rempe lost his footing there. And Floria <laughs> with a nice little spin around and move to the front. He had a little uh, Max the Fennigan off yeah, move going that's on. That's a Max there. move. I guess uh, we've seen other players try it in these days, but Travis Reese with a nice little move. Up the near circle, drop pass to Turgeon. Turgeon trying to get a shot through. It's loose up front and just goes wide. And it'll be cleared down by the Whalers, and that's Kokasi. And gets down to McDonald. Back at his blue line, over to Hannon. Over to the near side, over to Smith, across the blue line into the Whalers zone. Smith with a couple of nice moves there. Gets around three. Comes over to the far circle with a shot and a save by Keelar. He's got it up between, I believe, shoulder and helmet. And he'll you notice, hold on. You notice 42 the, uh, seconds left on the man advantage. Okay, now I got you. Go ahead. You notice the efficiency of this power play has improved tremendously this weekend. It changed something. As, as opposed to weekends past where they couldn't even break over the red line without losing the puck or giving it away. So much improved in the, on the behalf of the Potomac Patriots. Up top to Tamer Hannon. Takes a shot and it goes through but goes wide. Marks down low. Far corner. Opting over to the half boards. McDonald and Marks playing catch. Marks walking in, drops it over to the near corner or far corner. And it'll be picked up by Whipper. Back down to Marks. Marks dropping it behind him in the corner over to Whipper. Whipper, cross ice pass over to Tamor Hannon, and it bounces over a stick and out into the neutral zone. 13 seconds left on the man advantage. 130 or 1133 left here in the first. No score. 10 to 4 in shots. So the Patriots are getting up there on the board, namely because of this power play. Marks walking in, takes a shot, scores! Nathan Marks marks the spot on the power play. The Patriots strike first with 11.23 left here in the first. Haven't seen Nathan Marks in the goal column since that week one against the East Coast Eagles, but it's good to see him back, and I believe he had an assist last night. Back on the score sheet, he's one that we, we highlighted that first week and, and sort of needs to step it up, and he's made his presence felt this weekend. Just a simple shot right below the left arm of the goaltender, but beat him glove side. Goal, scoring his third goal of the season, number 19, Nathan Marks. Assisted by number 92, Teamer Hanhan. And by number 65, Kevin McDonald. Time of the goal, 8.37. With the Potomac Bobcats now, uh, or how does this work? The Panthers? <laughs> Well, uh, Prince William Panthers are in this location. This is their home barn, so we'll give them that. So one nothing, Potomac Patriots on a Nathan Marks goal. On the prowl. On the Metro DC DJs power play. Visit MetroDCDJs.com to book Jared Ronsky and his lovely crew of DJs and hosts and MCs, namely himself. He does a fine job there on the public address. His music choices, yay! <laughs> You know, we'll, we'll, we'll let bust, him go. We'll bust we'll his chops a little bit all year. <laughs> <laughs> as long as that Quad City DJs comes on again. Yikes. 10-20 left here in the first period. one nothing Patriots on the fifth shot for the Patriots. They were being outshot 10 to nothing at one point in this period. And as it goes back, deep inside the Patriots zone, Tim Orhanen getting one of those assists on that power play goal. He's still out there. So is Whip. And I believe... And Captain Turgeon is nice dangle. making his presence out there as Forrest makes a save and it does deflect off his glove and over the cage as it's cleared up to the blue line, not out. And Turgeon running at the point there, finishing his check. Hannon in a little trouble there for number two. Uh, or I beg your pardon, that's number three. That is Cameron Snyder. And Snyder putting it high into the air into the near corner. Got some chopping action going on here. Somebody lobbying for a penalty. They won't get it, but now we'll have a stoppage play. We do have a stoppage <laughs> with a penalty for a high stick coming up here. 
Who was that offending party? Yeah, Terjan. Uh, Terjan. I doesn't like it. So he's not going to go to the penalty box. Good. <laughs> he shouldn't. <laughs> but Timur Hannon is. <laughs> Good cover. Good cover. <laughs> well done, sir. <laughs> Smooth transition. Well, go so back again, in the power play number three. Penalty kill. Now the Hampton Roads Whalers. Potomac penalty to number 92, Timur Hannon. Two minutes for high sticking. Time of the penalty, 10:27. That's Patriots yeah, penalty. Tamar Hannon will sit for two. 9.20 left here in the first. Patriots have a one nothing lead, and the Whalers are looking to use this power play to even the score. Or the playing field at the very least. They do have an advantage in shots. They've had most of the offensive activity. But not in goals. Exactly. And it's the first time we're seeing Garrett Forrest in person. The last time he played, he lost 7 nothing to the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Junior Knights. Something we don't like to talk about around here. So we're not going to. Kanemitsu trying to feed his way to the front. Losing the puck off into the far corner. And he'll be picked up by Mickles. Mickles. Sending it over to the near corner. Floria trying to fight for it. Floria looking cross ice. Finds Kolkassi with a backhand shot. Whoa, and it's saved whoa, whoa. by Forrest. And Easy boys. Edgington is getting beaten up by Mickles. Gonna shove around from behind. I think. Edgington probably got under his skin for some reason or another. You know, Ed Edgington's not a not a gritty defender. He's a smart defender, though. That's what I like about him. I think it's a little edgy. He does. Oh. Wow. How long have you been waiting to play that one? So punny. <laughs> I'm the punniest guy in this rink. Uh, send your resumes to Cross Ice Feed. <laughs> <laughs> and you can send his emails, contact to Cross Ice Feed, if you ever want to complain about anything being said by Mr. Schrems. I'm immune. 8.25 left here in the first, 50 seconds left on the Tamor Hannon penalty, and the Whalers will come in offside. Well, check us out on Facebook, folks. Cross Ice Feed, look us up. And if you want to check out the Patriots playback, go to the iTunes store, search Potomac Patriots, and subscribe today. It's free. It's so free that we've made it free. So feel free to check it out. When you have free time, yes. Thank you for that finish. That was well done. Cornfield back in his own zone. Running around at this power play. 40 seconds left. Andrew Brissett, or Alexander Brissett, I beg your pardon. Uh, had his name mixed up, I think, a couple of times yesterday. But uh, he did have a goal. Alexander Brissett. Great defense. And he's trying to stuff it to the front, but great defense indeed. And they block it out with 20 seconds left on this Penalty kill for the Patriots. Snyder with a shot. It was a save there by Forrest. He had a pretty much open lane there to see that one through. Not a lot of traffic in his way. Ten seconds left. Alex Brissett trying to make a last-minute move here. Drops it to Cornfield at the point along the near blue line. Half boards over to Snyder. Snyder's cross-ice pass interrupted by Turgeon. It'll be Cornfield. Far side as we're back to five-a-side hockey. And comes over to the near side to Bagfeld. Bagfeld's got to realize that we're back to five aside. He almost iced it down, but McDonald will pick it up in that corner. And he'll send it high into the glass and down the ice. Chipped ahead by Smith, but picked up by Cornfield, who goes D to D. And it'll be chipped away and out into the Patriots bench for another stoppage with 7.16 to go here in the first. one nothing, Potomac. That's been the most yeah. offensive period for the Potomac Patriots, but they took advantage of that power play that they had. Nathan Marks. We remind our viewers, if you want commercial free, subscribe as a premium member to Ustream, $3.99 a month, and you will not have to deal with those ads every so often. But wait till December to do it. Yeah, wait till December. We won't be back till then. Well, no, we'll be back in November. Oh, for that. Yeah. For our UMBC fans, though, that may be watching, you might want to invest in this real soon here. Now the Whalers inside their own zone. And being pushed around in the background there, Cameron Smith getting shoved around. He's not one to get shoved, uh, you know, he's not really the aggressive type. As he comes up on a backhand shot by Gallette, it just goes wide off in the far corner. Mark's trying to clear it out, and he does so successfully. Here comes a chance for Smith. Smith has Turgeon. Smith coming in on goal with a deke, and he tries to get over to Turgeon, and he got taken out. And we'll have a stoppage of play. We will have a penalty as a result of that play, and it will be a trip. A trip. It's a good look had, by the official. Had Turgeon... Uh, just eased up a little bit on the speed. He'd have been right there for that wide open net rebound, but perhaps they uh, they keep him out there and he can bear one right here. 
Go two for two with the man advantage. That'd be nice. Gonna go back on the Metro DC DJs power play. Metro DC DJs .com today. Not tomorrow, today. Face off one. 19, Cody Pessig, two minutes for tripping. Time of the penalty, 13-29. McDonald with that flow. Trying to keep control of the puck <laughs> inside the Whalers zone. Down low to Piccarelli. Marks back up top, over to Hannon. Hannon back over to Marks. Marks having trouble receiving that pass, so he'll go into the boards with Woods as it's shipped up along the half boards. Cameron Snyder couldn't find it. Here comes Nathan Marks. Walks in, takes a shot to save the rebound. There is no rebound. It's swallowed up by Killar, or Killar, and uh, Nathan Marks looking to go uh, for a second power play goal. How about yeah, that? He scored two that opening weekend, and you know you give him a lane like that, you're gonna get burned one of these times. I gotta make sure they cover up Nathan Marks. He's a quick, quick little guy. A minute and 30 left on the power play. 6:01 left here in the first. One nothing Patriots lead. The Hampton Roads Whalers from Southern Virginia. So this one's tossed into the bench and out of play. So, Northern Virginia versus the rest of Virginia. <laughs> the real Virginia. The real Virginia. The real Southern Virginia. And it looks like Gillette's going to get tossed from the faceoff, and in will come Brissett. Up against Marks as this one goes directly in on Kila. Another stoppage. Seventh shot, minute 24 left on the Pesig penalty. 5.55 left in the first. Is this where they start to play the trap as you wish? Oh, no, I don't <laughs> wish for the trap. It was just an idea. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, I'm thinking after this weekend, they're not going to need to consider it. They've, they've looked pretty good this weekend. Well, your opinion is like a belly button. Everyone has one. And it's Whipper along the far side. Across the blue line and in. Over the far boards. In the Whaler zone. Brissette will backhand it out into the neutral zone. Hannah will pick it up at his blue line. Comes over to the near side. Not out. Kept in by Marks. Marks can get over to Piccarilli. Back over to Marks. The Whalers try to clear, and they do get it on the second attempt with 45 seconds left on the man advantage for the Patriots. 5-12 left here in the first period. Time winding down. I'd like to see them maybe get a two-goal lead if it's at all possible. Woods putting on some pressure on Smith, and wow, Woods, Woods taking out just Rempe. Built. Man, and taking out Rempe is quite an accomplishment, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Goes all the way down the forest as there's 20 seconds left on the Metro DC DJ's power play. One more rush here. Looking to go two for two. Moving it ahead. Along the near side, back belt, cross ice feed over to Reese. Reese across the blue line, coming into the top of the slot. And he curls over to the half boards near side. And he'll opt to drop the pass down to Cameron Smith. Smith. Near circle to Reese. Reese walking in, trying to put it to his backhand. We're back to five-a-side hockey, trying to stuff his short side with Smith. And here comes oh. a breakaway home run pass. He doesn't make it. And it's coming off that bench was Christopher Morrow. Bag felt back behind his own goal, having his pocket picked. And he's having a little trouble handling the puck as he had Kanemitsu on his tail. Kanemitsu trying to walk his way to the front. Smith got in the way of that one. Smith is going to try to take it out himself here as he gets around two. Whalers players. He still has the puck across the Whaler line. Winds up, takes a shot and right into the bread basket of Brett Keelar. Four minutes exactly left here in the first period. Remind you, Patriots Hockey brought to you by Reebok. Check out ReebokHockey.com to get your Reebok hockey gear. And also go to PotomacPatriots.net and get your Patriots gear. Get your swag. Some fashionable swag out there. Yeah, get your swag on. <laughs> oh, I'm getting a batter around back there. It looks like uh, it's Evan Sterling. He was a scratch last night. He's back in the lineup tonight. We should probably mention our scratches in this game for the Patriots. We'll get to that in just a moment. As it comes back into the neutral zone, Sterling putting it up in front of the bench. The Whalers bench and it. Back to Chase. Buddy Neighbor. Neighbor on the near side, up along the right wing for Snyder. Snyder with a move, comes in on goal, takes a backhand shot and it goes over the net. And off into the far corner. Picked up by Mickles and misplayed at the blue line and sent down to the Whalers zone. And it looks like both teams are going to get some changes as this one goes out of the reach of Morrow and this one will come back in icing. 3.07 left here in the first. I think one nothing Patriots. I think we're seeing Evan Sterling in replace of Mikey Carr. We don't have an injury report on Mikey Carr. Um, we'll have to ask Coach in the 
intermission what the deal is, but. Well, he will not be coming up himself. He'll have to get someone else up here. He said, depends on how much I have to yell in the locker room. <laughs> I almost passed out in the first intermission yesterday, he says, so. Coach would never say something like that. No, never. Must be misreading that. Yeah, I think he may be talking about Mahaffey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John is uh, quite a vocal coach. Yeah. And the Whalers controlling it now inside the Patriots zone with a high shot. Gloved down by Forrest. And Cameron Snyder starting to buzz around in that slot. And Forrest has been busy. A lot of point blank shots. And he's been up to the test. Yep. He's, he's, he's proven himself here. You know, I, I'm not going to lie. I was a little nervous. I was a little nervous. A little apprehensive. After I mean. that Wilkes-Barre outing? Yeah. Yep, yep. And it comes up to Cornfield. Top of the circle near side. And a shot's deflected through just wide. And it's played up along the far half boards inside the Patriots zone. Kept in at the point. And a one-time chance there for Snyder. Just doesn't get it on time. In the near corner. Hannon shadowing him. He takes him off the puck just for a moment, but he does get the pass up to Cornfield at the point. Cornfield with a shot. And it's gloved down by Forrest. And clipping Forrest was Zendejas. Rempe's having a few words with him. <laughs> and I don't blame him. Rempe's got a few inches on him too, so. <laughs> I can only imagine what Maybe he's about saying. 30 pounds as well. You're not kidding. This is one of those moments where Jared really needs to check his, yeah, his music he's selection. He's reaching. <laughs> <laughs> it's cleared out in the neutral zone, and Neighbor's going to chase it down for the Whalers back in his own territory. Looking behind Killer. He's being shadowed by Piccarilli. And it's turned over to Reese. Reese looking to set things up. Looking to go over to the near side with it in the near circle. Walking his way through and try to get the pass across to Rempe, but it's poked away by Kolkasi. Reese will pick it up, though, again. He's being shadowed by Kolkasi. Kolkasi getting a stick up on Reese, but the puck does come out in the neutral zone. Nathan Marks trying to poke it away from Kane Mitsu. Woods. The pass back to Kane Mitsu. Turned over to Tamar Hannon, but Hannon will put it back to Neighbor, who will put it ahead over here on the right wing for Brissette, but Piccarelli will get there first. The 222 is going to the near corner together. And trying to support is Hannon. Hannon gets clipped by Kolkasi. The pass goes up to the point. Neighbor with a shot and a glove saved by Forrest as it goes wide. He couldn't get a hold of it. As Hannon will put it out through center. And Neighbor and Woods working together in the neutral zone as Neighbor puts the pass over to the near side to Brissette. Brissette moving it to the front with a shot. Chipped ahead by Kanemitsu right on Forrest who has to make the save. And moving it forward but not out. The Patriots are trapped in their zone at the moment. And the Whalers get a chance to get a couple of changes with 1-10 left here in the first. one nothing Patriots lead the Whalers. And it's going to be Mickles across the line into the Patriots zone along the near side. And it's chipped up ahead and out of play. And we'll get the stoppage with 59.1 seconds left in the first. I was having some dirty laundry to deal with there. That light fixture looks like it's tilting. <laughs> After that punch. When's that one coming down? It's, well, we'll find out when the music stops. <laughs> There's a good chance of it. It goes off in the far corner. Bagfelt getting that face-off win off the Patriots. And Bagfelt over to the near corner. He's taking a look. Finds it through center. Sticks out stick, of the air. Stick. It's a high stick by the Whalers if they touch it. Either way, play is going to continue down here in the Whalers' end. 42.4. Face-off will come up to probably the left of Keelar. Our next broadcast will be on October 13th for the UMBC Retrievers. Playing against the Virginia Tech Hokies in a homecoming weekend. The next game will be the following day against Montclair. Check out crossicefeed.com for more details. And it comes up to the front. Smith almost had a chance to bury it. Keelar's knocking the net off in the process here with 34.7. Now whoa. we got some pushing and shoving. And Sean Gregory, who is just <laughs> overlooking everybody, Says, just Every, beat it. Everybody looks up to Sean Gregory. Everybody does, indeed. <laughs> Jason Wakely in, indulging us with his Michael Jackson moves while keeping his legs limber at the camera. <laughs> and Zunday Haas walking away with the puck through center. Being back checked by Whipper, and Whipper almost had his pocket, or picked his pocket, I beg your pardon. Snyder feeds it to the front, forced to save the rebound. And it's loose. And an attempt there by Pash. 
Very at home goes foiled as it goes off into the far corner. Cameron Smith dropping it behind him for Bagfeld. Bagfeld looking to set up the home run pass, but Zendejas got in the way of that one. Pass in the far circle, takes a shot and it's steered aside by Forrest. The rebound comes up oh, front and nice work there by Whip on his stomach. And Smith getting in front of that it's one. Time. That'll do it. Woo. Time expires here in the first period. Patriots up 1-0. They're being outshot 19-9. But hey, a lead's a lead. A lead's a lead. into the dressing room after one period of play. Hampton Roads 19 for Potomac 9. Check us out. Cross ice feed on Facebook. Check out our page, will ya? And send Shrems a winky face. No, oh, don't do that. Yeah, wink. Nobody winks anymore. Face off won by the Patriots. Yes, they do. I wink. I wink at you all the time. You just don't pay attention. Nope. Off in the near corner in the Whaler zone. Turgeon chasing. That's going to the boards with Woods. Woods sending sending the puck over to the opposite side where there's some less traffic. But guess what? Tamar Hannon's there. He'll wind up taking his shot, and it doesn't make its way through to Keelar. And we are at five-a-side hockey, and the Patriots a good showing there to start off this period. But Cameron Schneider takes his shot. Goes off the side of the net. And Zendejas dropping it back to Snyder. Snyder having a little trouble with Rempe. Rempe's got to watch where that stick is. It was up in the midsection. Could get caught with a hooking call. Nobody likes a hooker. Nobody likes anyone that hooks anybody, especially the referees. The throw in the box for two. It's one of those obvious penalties that you just can't get away with, is what I'm saying. Obstruction hooking. Obstruction hooking. Uh, any hooking. Tripping. <laughs> um, Holding, if you haul down a guy, I mean, there, there are, those are the three penalties you can't get away with. But the ones that you do get away with that are always questionable is checking from behind, boarding, charging. All the not-so-fun ones that could result in serious injuries. McDonald with a long shot. This one gets deflected out into the protective netting as and well. five-minute major penalties. Yeah, the five-minute majors are the toughest ones to call. And, the, you know, and they're the ones that people get away with the most, you know. It's just the, the fact of the matter is uh, penalties, eh, their job's not easy, but there are some things that I just sit there and go, why? <laughs> why? Done that quite a bit recently. Face off to the left of Keela. There's one back and sent around the boards by Neighbor. And up through center. Team Morrow setting up a pass, but it's intercepted. Piccarilli coming across the line of the Whaler zone. Off in the near corner, working with, I believe that's Travis Reese down there. As it comes up top, Marks will go along the half boards, goes off in the near corner. And it's over to Reese again, and McDonald will pick it up at the point, sending it right down to that corner again. You don't really want to opt to go back there where there's enough traffic. Florier is down there as it's sent across all the way into the far corner of the Patriots zone. The McDonald fighting for it off in the far corner, Piccarelli clearing it out in the neutral zone, and the Whalers will regroup at their blue line. Deflected in by Morrow, and McDonald will pick it off. 18-15 left here in the second period. Patriots with a 1-0 lead. Brissett into the slot. Looking for a shot. He takes it. It goes just wide. Forrest was way out of the net to challenge that shot. Wood sending it all the way around over to the far corner where Alex Brissett will be there to pick it up. Taking it up along the half boards up to the point and dropping it back behind him. Over to Mickles. And along the half boards far side and Marks, I think he may have gotten away with one there as he hauled down his man. That comes along the other side to Travis Reese. Reese with two power play goals last night. A dandy of a power play goal. Yeah, one going coast to coast. You'll see that one on the highlight reel. Stay tuned to the YouTube page, Cross Ice Feed on YouTube. Here comes a chance for Cameron Smith. Across the line, winds up, takes his shot, and it's easily gloved out of the air by Keelar. 17.29 says the clock. David Stearns with Brian Tremps of Cross Ice Feed Broadcasting Crew. Check us out at crossicefeed.com. Check out our schedule on the Ustream page of crossicefeed.com. And keep up with us on Twitter as well. We have a Twitter handle. It's Cross Ice Feed. One word. We are just reachable on all levels of social media. You can even email us at contact at crossicefeed.com. Here comes a turnaround chance with a shot. Keelar the save. The rebound. They score! I'm going to say Alex Gross popped that one back door. Giggity, giggity, giggity. It's a 2 nothing lead for the Potomac Patriots. A lot of hard work by Alex Gross down low. Got that rebound right out in front of him and just slammed it home past the goaltender. Referee saw it go in. I don't think we did. 
What are we calling here, Stearns? Well, we got an injured player. I'm trying to see who it is. It might be Rempe that's off by the Patriots dressing room being tended to. Not sure where that injury came about, so. I'll keep an eye on him. We will have to look for information on that. Second goal of the season, number 51. Oh, and a great Alex save by Forrest. Rose. Assisted by number 71, Sean Gregory. So gross from Gregory. And by number 50, and Carter Schultz. Carter Schultz. Time of the goal, 2.37. That's Potomac goal. Oh, I stand corrected here. It looked like it might be McDonald. I'm trying to see through the glass here as it comes up top. Hesick with a shot. And it stopped up front and sent out through center. Comes over to the near side of Woods. Woods. Up ahead for Cameron Snyder, who winds up, takes a shot, he scores! Cameron Snyder with a laser shot, beats Forrest, blocker side. And just like that, we back down to a one goal lead again for the Patriots. Absolute rocket of a shot from Cameron Snyder, and he beat Forrest short side, and I bet Forrest wishes he has that one back again. Two to one with 16.59 left to go. I think it is McDonald that is nursing an injury off by the Patriots dressing room. Yeah, they are they are tending to him pretty hard right now. And he's grabbing his arm, so we will keep everyone updated. Whaler's goal, scoring his third goal of the season, number three, Cameron Snyder. Assisted oh, by number defense. 15, Dylan Wood. Oh, what? And by number 19, Cody Pesson. A high stick. Time of the goal, 3-0-1. Wow. I'm with Gregory on that one. Where does a high stick come to play on that check? Wow. Gregory's got to keep himself in check. Don't take any stupid penalties. But he's got, he's got an argument. That was a valid yeah. check off the puck. Kerry Frazier making that call again. Mm. God, it's like 1993 all over again. Two minutes for high sticking. Time of the penalty, 3-12. That's Patriots penalty to number 71, Sean Gregory. Two minutes for high sticking at 312 for a Reebok hockey penalty kill. And then it comes up to the blue line and out. Kokasi couldn't keep it in. It's like Rempe's a little sore after that shot block. 1630 remains here in the second. Gregory back in the box. And just after the Whalers put their first goal on the board for themselves, as it's two to one, Patriots still lead. We're monitoring the situation with McDonald. It was currently off by the Patriots locker room. We're going to have another call here, and this one's going to go to the Whalers. So that'll even things up for the next minute and 17. Sean Craig can cool down a little bit, hopefully. Yeah. You know what? Missed calls are a part of the game, and you got to deal with them and stick with it. And for a side hockey without taking any stupid retaliation penalties. You know, four on three isn't too unheard of <laughs> in this, in this uh, We've venue. Seen three on three. Penalty to number six, Nick Michaels, two minutes for tripping. Time of the penalty, 3.55. So Michaels getting caught for tripping. And it'll be Schultz across the far side. Oh, oh wow. he gets destroyed by Pesic, who just got in his lane of traffic. Oh, boy. Big accident on 95. And coming up is Zendejas with a deke around. Schultz comes in on his back, and he scores! Zendejas over the glove side on a backhand ties his game at two with 15.37 left here in a second. Wow, what a change of pace. Yeah, another softy goal from Garrett Forrest and he's gotta cover his net a little bit better. He had such a strong first period and gave up two goals that he probably should have had. The first one to Cameron, I wanna say Smith, but I'm not wrong, it's Cameron Snyder, sorry. And then the one to Zendejas here off a backhand. Hardest shot Hampton to stop Rhodes goal, scoring his first goal of the season, number seven, Matt Zendejas. Assisted by number three, Cameron Snyder, and by number 15, Dylan Woods. Time of the goal, 4-23. That's Whipper bringing it into the Whalers zone, trying to center it there for Churchon in the slot, but it's picked off by the Whalers. And Woods across the line. Woods off in the near corner with it, four on four for the next 20 seconds, and then an abbreviated power play for the Patriots. 
Zendejas, far point, takes a shot, easily snappered down by Forrest. So, 24 to 13 in shots, We're all tied up at two. Patriots had a two nothing lead and that has been washed away. Yes it has. Like the shoreline of the Outer Banks. During a fine hurricane. As it's one back to the Whalers. Whalers controlling play with Alex Brissett. Back down low. Brissett looking for his return pass, but he won't get it as now we have a 40 second power play. Bagfeld leading the charge. Bagfeld across the blue line. Looking for an open lane to take a shot. Drops it on his backhand pass to Piccarilli. Piccarilli being challenged, and that challenge works out in the favor of Kanemitsu, who sends it down the length of the ice to Forrest. Reese. Having trouble handling that puck, he brings it up in front of Forrest. Forrest was displeased about him bringing that puck close. But it's sent right back down. 15 seconds left on the Metro DCDJ's power play. An abbreviated one at that. 14-15 left here in a second. We're all tied at two. At the Prince William Ice Center in Woodbridge, Virginia. The Potomac Patriots, Hampton Roads Whalers, and the EJHL South doing battle this afternoon. <laughs> and we have some fumbly rumbly being played out there in the ice. Everybody's fumbling on top of each other. Reese, over to the near side to Tamor Hannon. Hannon to the front looking for a chop from Piccarelli to redirect that puck. He won't get it as Whalers will break out. Look at now. Whalers coming in. And a shot to the front and a shove at the front by Ryan Gillette. And another shot coming from the Whalers. It was Gillette. The shot was steered aside, up front into the slot. McDonald is back out there on the ice. I did see him suit up, and he is A-OK, -okay, hopefully, all the way. But speaking of all the way, they're all the way off sides. We'll have a stoppage and a face-off just outside the Whalers' blue line with 13.29 left here in a second. And the Patriots hockey sponsored by Gatorade, the official sports drink of the Potomac Patriots. Rehydrates, replenishes... Rejuvenates Gatorade. The Whalers win that face off. Goes over to the near side neighbor. Putting it all the way back to Forrest. Goes all the way to the far corner. And the puck being picked up by Mickles. Up top to the point. And that's Pessig, who almost turns it over to Cameron Smith, who is pinching high. Cameron Smith trying to become more of a defensive presence out there in the Patriot zone. And he gets a pass from Gross, but he's a little frustrated. But the puck's left there for Edgington, who takes a shot. And Penalty. now it's going to be Gregory probably sitting for yet another oh, penalty. Oh, boy. Man, he's not going to argue this one. It was pretty well called. But Gregory's got to keep himself in check here. And that's three for him today. And he does come up with a shot. And Mahaffey is actually becoming an animate person on that bench. <laughs> Mahaffey enemy? Mahaffey is actually communicating with Gregory and some of his other players, and Gregory tosses the bucket off, so here's the call. Tomic penalty to number 71, Sean Gregory. Two minutes for cross-checking. Time of the penalty, 6.56. That's and here comes a chance now. The Whalers to the front with a backhand shot, and a great wow, save by Ferris, who went diving down on the ice. Now we got Zendejas punching. I believe it was Bagfeld in the face, and I'm sure Baker, the referee, is not going to call anything there. Here, let me punch you in the face. Let's see if I get away with one. Probably not. Somebody in the crowd will call 911 if they see me strike you in the face, Shrems. Can't hit a kid with glasses. <laughs> well, it's like when two players cross-check each other at the same time, does the world explode? Well, I'm wearing glasses too, sir. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Back to Keelar. It's a good clear as we have a minute and 30 left on the Gregory kill. Cameron Snyder through the neutral zone, off along the far side wing, over to Cornfield. Scott Cornfield, over to the near side of Woods. Woods winds up, takes a shot through to the slot, and a rebound, and it just goes wide. Cornfield came breaking in along the far post. Cornfield has it behind the goal line, takes it behind the net, over to the far side, and looping around the far circle, and he'll send it over to the near point to Snyder, back over to Cornfield. A lot of people up top, and the umbrella finally unfolds. Cornfield down low, opposite side, Schneider looking. A lot of passing, not a lot of shooting. Which is good for the Patriots. And here's a shot and a redirect oh. off the skid of Zendejas and wide. Cornfield, far side, spinning away from Puglia. 
Cornfield stepping into it, coming at the top of the slot, winds up, takes a shot, and it's just deflected short side away. Just missing that near post, and now we'll have a stoppage. 39 seconds left on Gregory's penalty. And the net is off by about three centimeters. And it is adjusted by Garrett Forrest. There it is. He's got to do it himself. It's a do-it-yourself organization. Well, he's doing it himself here. They're doubled up on shots here. 26 to 13 advantage, Hampton Roads. And now it's one by the Whalers to the blue line. Eh, not sure what's going on here. Kanemitsu was unsure if he wanted to keep it in or not. And goes over to the near corner. That is Haynes up top to Kanemitsu. Kanemitsu, oh, nice, nice dive there by Alex Gross. And Travis Reese is trying to get ahead here. And Wow, <laughs> Brett Keelar way out of his net. Make sure that nothing funny happens here because I think he watched intently how Travis Reese <laughs> can play out there. He did have a shorthanded goal, if I'm not mistaken, last night. I'm thinking of the wrong game. I am thinking of the wrong, wrong game again. Game. Uh, right shirt from Q. Yep. Uh, I'm going to say Q. I'm off by a letter. All right. So, Whalers breaking it out here. We're back to five-a-side hockey. Let's see if Sean Gregory can stay out of the box. Mickles losing his twig. Whipper coming in on his back end, trying to push it to the front. Floria was all over him. Whipper trying to get away from Floria, but Floria is going to tie him up and drag him down to the ice. Wow, yep. Yeah, There's he's tackling penalty. him. Yep. Here comes the call with a long toss on and a great glove saved by Kilar as he probably saved the player from losing his head. And we'll have another whistle. Floria is challenging Pouliot. Pouliot's standing tall saying, I'm the bigger man here. Go sit down. I ain't getting called I'll for anything. I'll take those two minutes. <laughs> yes, yeah, that retaliation. And look, at Floria is actually chirping the Patriots bench. I think Rempe had a few words for him. Best way to shut him up is by putting one behind the goaltender. Well, let's see if that can happen here. It's on the Metro DC DJ's power play. Check out Metro DC, DC DJs.com for more details. Hampton Roads penalty to number four, Ian Florea. Two minutes for cross-checking. Time of the penalty, 9.22. And 10 and a half to go here in a second. 150 left here in this man advantage. And we do apologize for that stoppage there. Broadcast with Gross with along the far side. Gross. Taking it behind the goal, beating it to the front and almost hooking up with Nathan Marks. Marks has a power play goal in this one. And Alex Gross does have a goal as well. Over the far side, Whipper takes a shot and a pad saved by Keelar. And the rebound is swept up and sent down the ice by Zendejas. 1-12 to go on the man advantage. Marks across the blue line. Everyone's on this one side, not spreading out at all. And he goes over to Gross, who's all by his lonesome on that far side. Deeks out one. He gets hooked up. No call. I mean, he kind of got wrangled down, lassoed, if you will. Cameron Smith, and oh, he's, he's upset. Here comes a shorthanded chance and a nice save. save. Cameron Snyder taking a shot on Garrett Forrest. And Turgeon's going to come back the other way with a full head of steam. Over to the near circle, half boards down into the near corner. He stays around that goal line, finds it up top to Backfield. Backfield winding up, taking his shot, and it's deflected away from the net. Off into the far corner. Nathan Marks will pick it up. He gets, cross -check. He gets oh. tackled from behind. And I saw a flinch from the referee. He wanted to call something, but I guess he's like, ah, I'll let him go. Too much calling him Whalers and stuff. 20 seconds left on the penalty to the Whalers. And Smith comes across the line near circle. And he's down in the corner. And he goes unchallenged as he passes it over to Reese. Reese working his way to the front. Torjan with a shot and a save by Keelar. The rebound is loose. It'll be picked up by the Whalers and sent down the length of the ice. Nice save by the goaltender. Ryan Gullet sending it down. Yeah, that was point blank. And Turjan is hurting for a goal. And comes up to the blue line and out, but back in as we're back to five aside hockey. And the Whalers are offside. They'll tag up and send it right back into the Patriots zone. And a dirty turnover with a shot there and knocking off the net. He's Garrett Forrest who panics. He tossed it right up front for the Whalers to throw in on goal. Wow we 8-16 left here in the second. We're all tied at two. Is that Bagfelt's turnover again? And he looks he appears to be injured a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, 
I don't see uh, Coach Ziegler anywhere on the bench. I just saw him take off. Um, he was without his coat. And he took off towards the locker room. Uh-oh. We'll have to wait and see what the situation is here. We'll try to get as much information as we can. Bankelt had a rough game. He's giving away the ball. <laughs> the ball, the puck, oh. uh, a, numer a, n a number of times in his own zone. He's, 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 he's got to make the smart decision and, and take the safe play out of his own zone. His, one of these turnovers is going to burn him in a 2-2 game. It's the last thing you want to see. And that felt in the penalty box. And we're seeing how good his English is. And shouting something towards the uh, two referees. We'll see what happens here as uh, we're still looking for Coach Ziegler. I'm not sure if we have a player missing from the bench. May or may not be injured. And now back belt out of the box, served his time, and not sure what the situation is here. He's not gonna get a penalty. We're trying, I'm trying to figure out what the situation is here because Bagfelt is no longer in the box, but the time is up on the clock. And both sides are wondering what the heck's going on. I don't know if that resolved anything, but um, we'll find out from the public address. No, we're five on five hockey. So no penalty. I guess uh, there will be no call. I'm 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 dumbfounded. I have no idea what's going on. So I guess we're gonna go five on five. We're not gonna get any answers. So it'll be the Whalers back in their own zone. The cross ice feed over to the near side, too far for the reach of Mickles. And it'll be the Patriots that'll pick it up inside their own zone, clearing it up in front of the Whalers bench. It'll be picked up at the Whalers blue line by number four, Ian Floria. And he's chased back behind his own net. JoJo Harding putting on a little pressure. And JoJo will go-go off on a change. Ice. And this one's sent down the length of the ice. And the Whalers will be victims of an icing call with 7.28 to play here in a second. 2-2 score. Things have kind of slowed down in this yes, game. Yes, they have considerably. I was yeah. just about to say things have died off here. Lost that flow that we had in the first half of this period. A goal would kind of break that up and That'd be nice. give us some new life here. And here comes Whip. Whip trying to move it to the front of the net. And he has to chase it behind the net. And he leaves it behind the net as the Whalers will pick it up. And send it over to the far boards. Pinching in. Bagfelt and standing up for himself on Pesic. And a chance Pouliot trying to find the puck. It's a bouncing puck. Finding its way over to the far corner. And the Whalers will control. Floria over to the near side over to Mickles. Mickles. Cross ice over to Haynes. Haynes will dump it in. And down there to chase Kanemitsu, but getting there first is McDonald, but it deflected funnily over to the near side half boards. And it'll be sent through center. And on the other side will be Cornfield that'll pick it up, working with Fleuria, but Fleuria will turn it over to McDonald, who will dump it in. Not deep enough, and the Patriots have to tag up, and it will get called on an offside, and this faceoff will be coming all the way down into the Patriots zone with 6.45 left here in a second. They have a tie game 2-2. Two -two. Don't forget to check out the Patriots website, PotomacPatriots.net. There you can find the latest in Patriots apparel. Look like the Patriots do, and you will be cool. And it's one back down the goal line. Rempe trying to move it along here, but it's going to be picked up by the Whalers along the half boards. And Reese is trying to pick apart Pash. Pash is going to take him down. Well, he's going to get back up. That's fine. Because Reese is going to get the puck. Well, he'll turn it over. We have a Whaler without a glove. And that is Gullet. It's taken into the boards, and the puck gets squeezed behind him. Ten more hands. It's going to put it up through center in the air and try to get it over Cornfield's stick, but Cornfield's going to put it right back into the Patriots' zone. Well, back and forth, and a lot of physical activity going on here, but no real genuine scoring chances to speak of. Nothing going on right now. 
Snyder walking in, loses control of the puck. It's loose up front. Morrow trying to find it, but it goes off from the near corner. And now a chance. Cameron Snyder walks out. Backdoor shot. They score. Hampton Rhodes Whalers take the lead for the first time in this game off of a Morrow goal. Slamming at home back door. Yeah, nobody marked Christopher Morrow. He was absolutely wide open. And Cameron Snyder continues to just ravage this Potomac Patriots team. Coach Ziegler is back on the bench. He is without jacket and tie. Not sure what the situation is there. Is there somebody missing off the bench? Trying to figure this in mystery in out. First goal scoring his first goal of the season, number 12, Chris Marrow. Uh, assisted by number 22, Alex Brissett, and by number three, Cameron Snyder. Time of the goal, 14-13. Wow, what a difference, huh? Absolutely. And it's off along the right. Face off one back into the corner along the half boards, kept in by Woods. Woods putting it deep, back behind the Patriots net. And Snyder up top, Florier taking a shot, he scores! Ian Florier going up top on the glove side of Forrest, hitting the twine and making it a two goal lead for the Hampton Roads Whalers. It's four to two with 5.27 left here in a second. And and it looks like change. we're going to have a goalie change. Yep. And it looks like Dustin Moyer is going to come out. Yeah. Well, we have a timeout for Potomac. Scoring his first goal of the season, number four, Ian Florea. Assisted by number three, Cameron Snyder. Time of the goal, 14-33. Very interesting situation. And uh, for you know, Forrest had a good period and a good first half of the second period, but yeah, you know, this this game had gone stagnant until the past minute or two ago, and things kind of just opened right up. They're playing without passion. The Patriots yep. have no passion. I won't demonstrate this dance. Don't. <laughs> Kids at school love this song, though. They don't even know what they do in the hall. They go. They do it in the hallway. <laughs> well, folks, this is a different style of hockey. We're not sure what's going on here. Patriots are still trying to figure themselves out. In net, it is Dustin Moyer. So, it's like that. It's a different game. Two goal lead for the Hampton Roads Whalers. The Patriots driving with a little passion there. Puglia taking out his man. But back the other way is Cole Cassie. Over to Woods. Woods centering pass to Zendejas with a shot that just goes wide. And already, Cole Cassie is giving Moyer the welcome to the ice. As oh, wow, Terjan almost had that deflected on the Moyer, but it goes wide. Five minutes left here in the second period. We're singing a different tune, folks. As the Patriots with a two-goal lead after one, now it's Hampton Rhodes with a two-goal lead as they try the stuff attempt there on the short side. Not a power play. Not a power play indeed. And we have players constantly going in and out of the locker room. I believe that's Alex Gross that keeps going in and out of the locker room. Something, something's going down inside there. And now it's played off over to the far side and up top at the point with a long toss that goes wide. And it comes out of the neutral zone and chopping Matt Whipper almost got called for a slash there now Pouliot doing a little dance with Zendejas at the blue line but Zendejas is going to go off at a change along the right wing for Terjan Terjan looking finds Whipper but Whipper is going to deflect it in and we're going to get a bunch of changes up front and even on the back end too as Edgington comes out there the pairing with McDonald they got a player behind them they got to watch out for it and it was Haynes but now they have Gullet to worry about Gullet Running around the outside, far side, dropping it back over to the near side. All over the place they go with this puck, but nothing going towards the net just yet. 
And Pash with a shot that gets deflected on to Moyer, who makes the save. And it'll be chipped out into the neutral zone. Piccarilli trying to pick it off. Reese giving it a second effort, and he does get it into the Whaler zone, off into the corner. Piccarilli with a hard check there. Oh, what, what was wrong with that check? He turned his back at the last second. There was nothing wrong with that check, sir. What was wrong with that check? If if I were if I were Piccarilli, I'd be I'd be arguing that one a little bit. He, you go back to the tape. We'll show it on the tape here. My goodness. You turn your back at the last second. You put yourself in that situation. Yep. The player yep. making the check did not turn your body. Nope. No, nope. he wasn't head hunting by any stretch. I'm 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 astounded that and, that was and, even called. And Mahaffey has a, a, a legitimate argument to make there. That was uh, this no-name referee has been a problem. Potomac penalty to number 22, Mike Piccarilli. Two minutes for charging. Time of the penalty, 16-27. I don't know. Charging? Ah, lining up your check is one thing now. Come on. And if you're going to see the opportunity, you're going to take it. But he was not three strides out. Nope. And it's played up into the neutral zone. And Alex Gross trying to get there. But instead, it'll be Woods that'll play it up at the red line. Woods along the far side. Wow. What happened there with Gross going flying, but regardless, here comes Pouliot. Short-handed, he'll dump it off in the far corner and go off on a chain. Gross is a little hot right now. He's got to get off the ice and collect himself. Yeah, definitely, I agree. 2.55 left here in a second, 1.22 left on Piccarilli's penalty. Zendejas, near circle, centering feed to Cameron Snyder. Snyder does find it, brings it to the forehand, takes a shot, it's loose up front, and the net is knocked off, and we'll have a stoppage of play. Hornfield and Snyder <laughs> up here having a little fun at the top of the near circle. Well, you, 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 this 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 Patriots team has just reverted back to their old ways. They just look drained. They can't get anything going. A completely different team than we saw from last night. Almost had me jump in there. <laughs> I'd like to remind everybody to check us out on Facebook. Our Facebook page is open for business and for your liking. You can like us and then ignore us on the news feed if you want. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we just love, uh, you know, people sharing the love with us. There's no love button. There's just a like button. Sorry. You can poke us, too. That, that went out of style about five years ago. Cornfield back behind his net with 2.22 left here in a second. 48 seconds left on Piccarilli's penalty. Getting some speed through center is Snyder. Snyder walking and taking his shot. Doesn't make its way through traffic. Clear up to the blue line and not out. Kept in tight the blue line by the Whalers. Woods dropping it down low. Snyder to the front trying to find Brissett. And he couldn't hook up with him. And Reese is not taken down. He got hauled down. No call. But regardless, play carries on. The Whalers controlling the play now. Zendejas across the line. And dropping it down low for Brissett, who has to deal with McDonald. McDonald trying to check him off the puck. Brissett still with it. McDonald shadowing him. And then he drops it over to Snyder, who tries to center it out front. Bagfeld trying to poke it away, but he turns it over to Snyder. Back up top to Cornfield. Cornfield looking for a lane. Finds the backdoor shot there for Woods that goes wide, and we're back to even strength. With 90 seconds left here in a second. 4 2 Hampton Roads on the Patriots. And the Patriots squandering a 2 0 lead. And it's a shot by Kane Mitsu. The rebound comes up front. It'll be chopped down the length of the ice, but not all the way for icing. It's back to Chase. It is. Number six, Mickles. Over the near side of Woods. Patriots getting some fresh legs out there. So we close in on the minute mark here in the second. And an attempt there to stuff it home. Just went wide. Whalers keeping it in, and we are down to the one minute mark. 35 to 17 are the shots currently in favor of the Whalers. And definitely a change of pace here. And mind you, they were outshot 19 to 9 when they had that 2 0 lead. The Patriots yep. did. Absolutely. Those quality shots were lacking right now. Lack of setup. Any shot on goal at this point is, is going to be beneficial for Potomac. Yeah. 38.4 left here in the second period. 4 to 2, Hampton Roads, Whalers. Leading your Potomac Patriots in some Eastern Junior Hockey League South action. Information about the Eastern Junior League, Junior Hockey League South, go to ejhlsouth.com to find out more. 
Face off taken by Rempe up along the glass and up to the blue line and out. Nobody there to catch it for the Patriots. Turgeon got on Kokasi. Kokasi dropped it back to Florea and he finds its way to Kanemitsu in the neutral zone. Back over to Kokasi along the left wing with a shot and a save by Moyer and a stab at the glove there. And walking away, yeah, being challenged by Pouliot. And offender was number 19, Cody Pessig. That's a smart thing to do. You know, you stab a goaltender in the glove and then get as far away from the <laughs> scene as possible. <laughs> There's two or three people going to come looking for you. Exactly. The bounty hunters are out there, aren't they? Where are they? Yep, Rempy's out there. Uh, is Piccarelli out there or Gregory or Gross? No? Okay. <laughs> Good, he's safe for now. Rempy along the near side, clearing up to the blue line and out. Here comes Whip. He's got two on one, developing with Turgeon with 10 seconds. Whip taking a oh, shot and it gets percentage. deflected wide and behind the net with four oh, seconds. Oh, wow. Oh, and that's it. Oh, oh, wow. Rempy. Okay, Whipper needs to back off and now we have a bunch of people getting into it. And suddenly we're in the Macy's Day Parade with all the whistles going on. <laughs> okay, we're going on a power play. I don't think that's going to last. <laughs> I mean, oh, I'm worried about this song selection. All right, so regardless, uh, it was a hard check down low. Booming check. A booming check. And there was the initial call. Now I'm sure things are just going to even out. I mean, that uh, retaliation usually so. does it really. Okay, so two in the box for the Whalers. Maybe Turgeon's going too? Nope. Uh, I'm thinking Whip might be going. Oh, maybe not. Whipper was the one that came in there after the play, did he not? Well, he might have escaped here. Uh, Pouliot, yeah, well, he's in a box. I don't think he, he delivered the blow after the whistle. I thought it was Whipper that came in and delivered a driving blow to the offending player. Then yeah. you... Uh, no. No, nope. he, he's, he's going away He doesn't want to spend time in that box. I'm sure Gates is having a conversation. Wait, wait, wait. What about this guy? 2.6 remains. They're going to shut the door and uh, call it a day as far as uh, the penalties go for the Patriots. Sort them out. Five-minute major up there for the Hampton Roads Whaler player. Is that boarding? And that's Cody Pessig. He's going to get tossed from this game. You know, he had that questionable uh, shove on um, Moyer, a stab at the glove. He's the one that got away. Yep. And finally, he gets caught for something or another. Waiting well. to get these the things sorted out. All right, we'll fill in with things. Uh, let's see. Patriots hockey is brought to you by Gatorade, uh, uh, the official sport drink of the Potomac Patriots. They're also powered by Reebok Hockey. Check out ReebokHockey.com. Uh, you're going to see all these commercials in a moment anyway. DC Metro or Metro DC DJs. Jared Ronsky, our PA and DJ here at the games. He's, his business can be seen at MetroDCDJs.com. Book them for your live events. MCs, five hosts, and two, and DJs, and aha! Five minutes up there for Pesic, and two minutes up there for Pouliot, and Terjan and Snyder will get the explanations for the respective clubs, and one team will be walking away, shaking their head, going, "What just happened?" And that'll probably be the Patriots because they're down by two after having a two-goal lead. But you have the gift of a five-minute major heading into the third period here. Score at will, relentless. Yeah. Relentless scoring. Well, check out our website, crossicefeed.com, if you're not already here. The Ustream tab is where you'll find all the broadcast scheduling information and the live games as well, like right now. Go home and watch the Austin Powers trilogy tonight now. Oh, now, now we got two in the box. Ah, uh, yes, we do. Not sure <laughs> if it's the right person, but we'll find out. Jared Ronsky's got to sort this one out for us. Oh, here we go. It's all you, Jared. 
Start it up. Anytime now. <laughs> so five and two are on the board. Five minute major for Pesic and two minutes for Pouliot. We may have some offsetting minors that uh, I'm not sure who's who. And there we go. Let's get the explanation. Period expired. Here are the penalties to Hampton Roads, number 17, Taylor Posh. Two minutes for roughing. Hampton Roads, number 19, Cody Pesig. Five minutes for head contact in a game misconduct. Potomac's number 93, Joe Pouillot. Two minutes for roughing. Two minutes for cross-checking. All penalties come at 19.58. That's Whaler's penalty to number 17, Taylor Posh. Two minutes for roughing. Whalers penalty to number 19, Cody Pesig. Five minutes for head contact and a game misconduct. Patriots number 93, Joe Pouillot. Two minutes for roughing, two minutes for cross-checking. All penalties come at 19.58. Serving the penalty for Potomac, number 71, Sean Gregory. <laughs> Gregory just can't get out of the box, can he? Welcome back, everybody, to the Prince William Ice Center in Woodbridge, Virginia. David Stearns joined here with Brian Schrems. Schrems, they're down by two. They were up by two going into that frame, and boy, they're on the other side of the coin really quickly now, aren't they? Yeah, it's it's one of those things we were just we just got done talking about. They're reverting back to their old ways of the past couple of weeks. We only see 17 shots on the board for them. After that second goal was scored, I mean, it just turned into a lifeless, lifeless effort from their part. And Potomac Patriot. You know, I'm sure something was said there in the locker room to where to you know spark some rejuvenation into these guys here a little bit, but. Man, it, it, it's a far cry from what we saw from this team last night, that's for sure. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Couldn't agree with you more. We'll have to wait and see if these guys can slam home two. Sort of a gift coming out of the locker room, an abbreviated five-minute power play. Yeah. Score at will for about two minutes. Well, the four-on-four four for the next minute and 58, and we'll have that uh, three minutes remaining for, a, for an all-you-can-score buffet unless they do something stupid. Okay. Or they just mistakenly trip up somebody by accident by lazily having their stick out there. It depends on how you view it. Really. It's a whole slew of things that could happen. Yeah. So, we'll have the face-off at center to start this third period. Got to get that next one real quick, though, to kind of jumpstart this comeback here. Oh, it's much needed. So, four on four to start things off. A little jump early there by Travis Reese, but the faceoff continues on. And is one back in the Patriots zone. Almost a dangerous turnover there. Still trying to work his way out. There goes Hannah that got it on a ramp. A spin around to clear it out through the neutral zone. Go straighten her hat brim for her. Yeah, or him. Him. Uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Rhodes, number 12, Chris Marrow. I didn't catch that. Serving the penalty. Ah, got it. Roger that. Over to the near side, the cornfield. Into the Patriots zone, cornfield. Walking in, top of the slot, winds up, takes his shot, and it goes wide to Moyer. Moyer, a little balance issue, but uh, he finds his footing. And this one goes just wide. Over to the near side corner. And Zendejas putting his check on as this puck comes way out of the reach of Tamor Hannon. But it goes out into the neutral zone. And Zendejas across the blue line. Trying to cut his way to the front of the net, but it's cut off by Edgington. Edgington just got elbowed in the head by Zendejas as he went in. I thought he brought his elbow up on that. And if I'm, maybe I'm blind. <laughs> well, so are zebras apparently. Bagfell winds up, takes his shot, and it just goes over Keelar's stick and goes wide. Kept in up top of the blue line, far side by Edgington. Over to the near side, blue line. Bagfell winds up, takes his shot, finds its way through. Saved by Keelar and Smith trying to bang home the rebound, but he'll come up short on that as the Whalers were ready for that. Smith rushing to keep it in. Smith, he does keep it in, but Snyder will pick his pocket, bringing it over to the far corner, where it'll be picked up by Cornfield. Cornfield over to Kanemitsu, far side, coming through the neutral zone. And Jojo Harding's got to be careful there. He kind of had that uh, hook you know, kind of going on there. Literally, it looked like a hook the way it came down. But here we go. Three-minute power play. And it's the major power play. 
So all you can score buffet if they can do so. It'd be nice to draw another one too, you know? Have a nice little five on three, but yep. work with uh -oh. what you got. 1750 remains here in the third, 246 left on the major. Let's see if Cameron Smith can find it here. He almost got knocked out Keep there by neighbor. Yeah. And neighbor, or I'm sorry, Smith over to Piccarelli, whose shot gets deflected out of play. 1737 left here in the third. A little slow start here to get things going. Pouliot will have to wait an extra couple of minutes there to find his way out after a whistle. He's serving four. And it was Gregory that served his initial two. Gonna pump some life into this crowd too. There's not much doing right now. Face off to the right of Keeler. Gross winds up, takes a shot blocked by neighbor up front. Piccarelli picking it up in the near corner. Down below the goal line. Up top to Gross. Gross. Line two. Up top at the blue line, takes a shot and doesn't make its way through. And it's off in the far corner and nobody for the Patriots is really going to pursue it. And it goes down the length of the ice. Off in the near corner it goes. And over to the far side. Uh. And out of the reach for a whip. And the Marks and Piccarelli, they're going to rule that uh, Marks played it with a glove pass and Piccarelli touches and will have the face off down the other end. With 16.51 left here in the third. 149 left on the major. I'm falling asleep. Yeah, not, not the ideal situation that you want to be in and, and certainly not the ideal way you want to handle that situation. There's been no activity on this power play whatsoever. Waiting for some last minute changes for the Patriots. They're going to get a whole fresh line out there. Get some energy here because that line lacked it. That's for sure. One back by Reese, but nobody there for his side of the ice to pick it up. Reese off along the half boards. Oh, well, I'd like to go back into the corner with it to John Rempe. I'm sorry. Yeah. With the up ahead here for Bagfelt. Bagfelt into the near corner. Looking to throw it to the front. Smith will walk away with it. He's getting chopped up a little bit. Reese had it for a moment, and he loses it. Clear up to the blue line, not out. Bagfeld keeps it in. Over to the near side boards. Down low for Rempe. Over to Smith. And Smith gets roughed off the puck, and this Jeez, one's sent down the length of the ice. 106 left in the major. No goals on it. They are down 4-2, to two, folks. Patriots looking for a win. They haven't had one since game two of their season. This one comes out through center. Rempe, no, it was behind him. Bagfelt will find it. Bagfelt, back pass over to Rempe. 45 seconds left on the man advantage. Referee got in the way of this one. He's gotten away, got in the way of a lot of this game, actually. And now coming back the other way, Captain Turgeon through center. Turgeon takes a shot in the slot and it gets deflected wide. Smith going to chase, but too, too late. This one's sent up high in the air, but gloved down by McDonald, who comes across the blue line. McDonald winds up, takes a shot, and it goes wide. Gets his own rebound, but it'll be picked up by Florier and sent down, or Floria, and sent down in the neutral zone. McDonald over to the near side. Turgeon picking it up, curling through center. Ten seconds left on the five-minute major. It comes down over to Alex Gross in the near corner. Gross stops, turns, tries to put a pass up to the blue line of Tamar Hannon, but it's going to be... Picked up by the Whalers in out through neutral. We're back to five-a-side hockey with 15 minutes to go here in the third. And a save there by Moyer. Patriots need two goals to tie. And a chance up front. And a point-blank shot to save by Moyer. Yeah. That was a, a bit of a, a tough thing to watch, to be honest with you. Definitely. Definitely. You had a you had a gift of, of all you can score for three minutes and, and they don't get a shot on goal whatsoever. So <laughs> not a single one. If the power play's not gonna do it, I'm not entirely sure what is at this point. And it'll be picked up, moved up into the neutral zone. Schultz just gets punished for handling the puck by Pash. And Harding trying to chase it. 
And then Marks and Harding working together. Well done, Marks finding a chance here now. It's Alex Gross that takes a shot. There's a save made by Keelar. I don't know how he got that one. Wow. It's great save by the goaltender. Stuck with the shooter. Squared him off and, and took away that net. Finally, a scoring opportunity. The Whalers win that face off. It's over along the far boards now. Marks trying to work with Gross to free it up to the point. He'll be chipped up. Not out. Harding kept it in there just for a moment. And a second effort by the Whalers. Moves it out to the red line. Patriots tag up on the re-entry. But regardless, the Whalers will come back the other way with Pash. Pash getting bumped off the puck by Alex Gross. And Marks putting it up along the boards. Not out. And Alex Gross will find it. And with an extra move there, he turns it over to Cornfield. Is going to put it in over along the near side. With Morrow putting it in even deeper as Edgington's back there. And nobody seems to have a real solid control here of the puck. Both sides turning it over left and right, but here comes a chance. And Kanemitsu couldn't get a shot on it. Whipper still on his feet there as he's getting bumped around a couple times. We have a delayed call coming up. Alex Gross with a couple of moves trying to drag it through with a shot, but looks like the Wheelers are going to be short-handed. 13-26 left here in the third. Patriots need two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they just got off a of power play for three minutes, all you can power play, and they had absolutely no shots on goal, so. A lot of room for improvement, I guess. A lot of room. Well, the faceoff won by the Whalers. Teen Scott Cornfield, two minutes for high sticking. Time of the penalty, 6.34. That's Whalers penalty to number 13, Scott Cornfield. There you have it. And sent down to Moyer. Moyer's gonna have to set up shop here. We're back on the Metro DC DJ's power play. Check out MetroDCDJs.com after the game. Because we got 13 minutes left here in the third period. Travis Reese coming across the blue line, losing control of the puck, but still maintains control after he regains it. And it comes over to Tamor Hannon. And he's down in the near corner with the puck, still with it, into the circle, losing control of it, but it is sent up to McDonald. McDonald, Whipper, Oy. Whipper almost having it picked off by Zendejas. Zendejas getting a wrap around him. And it'll be sent up top to McDonald. McDonald back over to Whip along the far boards. Whip walking in with a little drag and a shot and a save by Keelar. And Woods. Taking out Whip into the boards. Turgeon will find the puck back over to Whipper, and we have a delayed call, and it looks like it'll be interference against the Potomac Patriots, and I'm not going to repeat what I heard shot from that Patriots bench. <laughs> we can't. We're broadcasting. Travis Reese will sit for those two minutes. Well... I think I'm going to invest in cots for our broadcast team. Because <laughs> this, this team is kind of lacking the passion that's necessary to get the win in this game. We saw that passion last night. I'll tell you that oh, much. Oh, we definitely did. Number 98, Travis Reese. Two minutes for interference. Time of the penalty, 7.37. That's a four on four for the next 47 seconds. On his back end, Alex Brissett moving along over the opposite side to Florier. Floria. How many different ways have I said his name this weekend? Two different ways. Really? Yep. Oh, you, you counted. Yep. Thank you. That's really nice. And as the shot goes real wide there, eh, not too wide, eh, just over the glove. And Rempe up ahead for Sterling. Sterling couldn't receive that pass. He's trying to regain his footing. And Sterling has got to be careful there. Kind of doing a chop there. Once you get frustrated by another player's speed, you got to kind of just keep moving your feet as this one's deflected onto Moyer. And Marks bites the boards there, but it looks like Rempe will get a hold of this puck and send it down the length of the ice as time expires on the Whalers penalty. Now one minute power play for the Whalers with 11.22 left here in the third. Patriots down by two. And Cameron Schneider along the half boards gets nice taken hit. into the boards nicely by Alex Gross. Cornfield chasing it down low. Edgington trying to cut him off. That will be the Whalers with the support from Kolkosik who takes a shot that goes well wide. Up at the point, far blue line, Woods moving to the top. 
Over to the near side. Still with the puck and he'll pass it down low. He'll get a return pass. And he'll take it through, looking for a deflection to go in, but Kolkasik, or Kol uh, let me start that again. Kolkasik deflects it out of play. You could hear a pin drop in here. It's so quiet. ZZ Top. Even. <laughs> even even the, the slightest bit of, of offense would, would maybe hopefully spark something here in yeah. favor of Potomac. A shot or a shot. post yep. or something. Fleuria with it now. Kanemitsu working with Cornfield. Cornfield walking in, taking a shot. And we're going to be back to five-a-side hockey in five seconds. 10.28 left here in the third. And we are, in fact, back to five-a-side hockey. And JoJo Harding pushing Cornfield along, but Cornfield still has the puck. Cornfield with a cross-ice feed up top over to Floria. Floria putting it down low in the far corner. And the Patriots trying to send it around the boards. Not out, kept in by Floria. Or, I'm sorry, that's Cornfield. He gets checked on the boards by Harding. Kanemitsu keeps it in tight at the blue line. Sends it over to the half boards. Power play's over. And now Alex Gross is going to go chasing for it in the far end of the neutral zone. This is getting really quiet around here, but here comes Nathan Marks. Let's see if he can spark things up. No, he gets taken off the puck by Cornfield. Floria chasing it back in the far corner. He'll get it along the half boards over to Mickles. And centering feed over to Kanemitsu. Over to Haynes. Haynes winds up, takes a shot, and it goes well wide. Over to the half boards. And all the way out into the neutral zone, Cameron Here Smith Come on, gaining buddy. some speed. Cameron Smith across the blue line with a little toe drag, trying to drag it through to the slot. Nobody there to pick it up. And it's moved off along the far boards in the Whalers zone. And a nice check there by Piccarilli. Piccarilli trying to take out Pash, and he does. Some good energy there as this one sent out into the rafters to get a stoppage play because things were actually starting to look good. <laughs> 9.17 left here in the third period. Four to two. Hampton Rose Whalers still in the lead. Crossicefeed.com slash Ustream will give you the broadcast schedule. Next time we'll see you, of course, is in November. Philadelphia Jackals coming to town. Tune in here on crossicefeed.com. And here comes a shot from the Whalers that goes just wide. Over to the near side blue line. And a high shot goes into the glove of Moyer. Not much going here as a flow is just not going to happen here. Face off to the left of Moyer. A little tisking noise from Shrems, but he's got nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't even have anything stupid to say. I know. It's just stunning. <laughs> Usually I can count on you for at least that. <laughs> oh, lordy. It's Tamor Hannon putting it behind the back for McDonald. McDonald putting on some speed along the right wing. And he'll try to dump it in. It's caught up in the paraphernalia of neighbor. It does come out now <laughs> as he gets checked to the ice. And McDonald trying to move it to the front. He gets hold, wow. he gets held up and tossed down. Yeah, interesting no call. Yeah. I guess we're going to put the whistle away. Except for whenever someone just holds onto the puck long enough. <laughs> Turgeon through center. And across the right wing. Winds up, takes a shot. Glove save by Keelar. And a rebound up front. It's loose and it's shoveled off over to the far boards where Woods will pick it up for the Whalers. And Woods will dump it in, and he'll go off on a change. Edgington chasing it for the Patriots along the far board, setting it up there for Gross. Gross walking his way through the neutral zone, trying to move it ahead to play it to himself, but he turns it over to Cornfield. Cornfield across the blue line into the Patriots. Oh! Zone. And we're going to call that wow. something. We'll find out what he's going to call it. He tried the hip check, man. 7.46 left here in the third. The oh. Patriots are going to go down a man. <laughs> that guy's got a point. I didn't hear what he said. You can't trip somebody with your butt. <laughs> that is that is probably the most intelligent thing I heard in the last 30 seconds. Actually, all day, all day, wow. all day. I no, thought we not had a meaningful seconds. conversation earlier, but hey, I still My like you. I goodness. still like you. That, that was a failed hip check. Potomac penalty to number 19, Nathan Marks. Two minutes for, for tripping. Butt checking. Time at the penalty, 12-14. That was butt checking. We'll call it. 
We'll call it what it is. A lot of rough stuff going on in front of the net there. And Mitsu with it at the top of the slot, sending it down over to Cornfield on the backhand shot. So that was Haynes that took that shot. And he recovered by Bagfeld. Edgington, yeah, he's he's having a rough time up there up front. I believe it was Mickles that was roughing him up. 7.18 to go here in the third, 1.30. All right, 125 left on the penalty to Nathan Marks. And comes over into the Patriots zone, Kenny Mitsu. Backhands it up to Kokasi, who tries to throw it on net, but it goes well wide. Floria over in the far blue line, putting it all the way down. Into the Patriots zone, comes up top to Kokasi. And Haynes up top. And a shot there and a save by Moyer without his stick. Reaching out and grabbing that one and getting the stoppage. 57 seconds left on the shorthanded effort by the Patriots. They need to make an effort to get out of their zone sometime soon if they want to get two goals with 6.43 left here in the third period. Maybe a shorthanded attempt here or something to, to spark some life in this crowd, Mike. And here comes a chance now. Brissett trying to put it on his back into his forehand and a save by Moyer, and he finds it by his pad, and he holds on to get the whistle. Maybe we'll call Coach Ziegler during the week. Let him stew this one out. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get an immediate post game. We need this one to sink in with everybody. Ernie <laughs> Els is about to putt. <laughs> You're watching the Ryder Cup here on Cross Ice Feed. This one Quad comes up to Cornfield. Cornfield over to Snyder with a shot. Nice save. Great save by Moyer. And now a bunch of rough stuff as the blue paint seems to be the wrestling ring. <laughs> I mean, it's fitting. You know, watching some WWF, the World Wildlife Fund. I mean, at World, <laughs> World Wrestling Federation, sorry. Oh, wow, Freudian slip. Uh, get those two confused all the time. I always envision pandas wrestling, you know? It's like, really? <laughs> well, hey, we got a penalty. Zendejas is going to sit for two. Well, we got some four on four action. For the next 623, face off coming down to the right of Keylar. Let's see if the Patriots can do something here. Create some opportunities. Our cameraman has made a prediction. We're not going to ruin it and tell everybody, but let's hope it happens. Face off one by the Patriots. Matt Zendejas, two minutes for slashing. Ooh. Time of the penalty, 13-37. But a new stick out there from McDonald who broke his twig. And he sent around the horn. And now here comes a shorthanded try. It'll be Snyder trying to move away from Tamar Hannon, who did a fine job of diving in front of that one. Here we go, here comes Cameron. Cameron Smith, one-on-one -on -one with Woods. Smith trying to drag it through on his backhand with a shot and a save by Keylar. He had, who was that rushing to that? That was Travis Reese. So now we got a power play for the next minute and 20. It's so now Brissett going on a shorthanded try here for the Whalers up top to Cornfield. Cornfield winds up, takes his shot. Moyer to save the rebound. Comes out to Cameron Smith. Cameron Smith realizes that time is of the essence and will not let Moyer make the face-off call by holding on to it. Over to Whip. Whip trying to get around Cornfield. He does so. Gets around another. Can he get through wow. another? No, he can't. As Woods had him tied up at the last second before taking a shot. And this one's cleared down by the Whalers. Length of the ice. 45 seconds left on the man advantage. 5.08 left here in the third. Potomac Patriots down to the Hampton Roads Whalers. 4-2. At the Prince William Ice Center in Woodbridge, Virginia. Bagfelt winds up, takes a shot. It goes right off of Floria. Piccarilli taking out Floria. Come on, as he keep that, that puck around as it's up at the blue line and out. And the Whalers, Kokasi, puts it down into the Patriots zone. Into the near corner for Terzia. With 20 seconds playing the man advantage, 4 or 43 left here in the third period. Edgington moving ahead. Edgington has it poked away from him and it's sent down the length of the ice. And five seconds remain on the power play. Nathan Marks, who has a power play marker in this goal, or in this game, I beg your pardon. 
High stick. And this one's high sticked out of the air by the Patriots, but the Whalers will play it, so waved off. And Mickles with a shot and a pad saved by Moyer. And Brissett losing his footing. Marks will pick it up and send it out through the neutral zone. We picked up and lost by Neighbor, but it will be the Whalers that still maintain control with four to play here in the third. Brissett is going to touch it. No, I guess they're going to call this one uh, an icing, and the coaching staff and the Whalers are trying to figure out why. <laughs> all of them are in the same position right now. Yeah, <laughs> hands on head. Hands on head. Uh, the guy on the left is oh, out. Oh, he's out. He's out. So, and I guess we're going to have the face-off down inside. They're confused. Well, that's what happens. And so are we. An icing. Yeah, an icing. <laughs> yeah. We have to mic up a ref. Like that, that's that's the goal for for cross ice speed by the end of the year. Mic up the ref. No, no, I don't want to hear half the things actually. <laughs> Maybe some things. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know. Well, the faceoff was to the left of Moyer for some reason or another, and Piccarelli bring it over to the near side inside the Whalers zone. And. And it'll be cleared out by the Whalers, and this one will be an icing. There's Rempe's back there to get. 3.34 left here in the third period. 4-2. to two. Get one late Rhodes here. Leading the Potomac Patriots. Haven't seen a win in weeks. It's been a while, and we don't get to see this team for weeks. No, we don't. We don't see them until November. Mid-November, they'll take on the Philadelphia, the, uh, Philadelphia Jackals. Doesn't count for the standings, does it? No, it's just an exhibition set of games yeah, yeah. to get them going. Keep them limber. As Tamer Hannon could not keep it in there as it's played ahead by Haynes. And you know, Sterling got away with one there as he took out Haynes on a trip. Patriots trying to clear it out. Oh, 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 wow. Wow. There by Piccarelli. Wow, and the Hampton Roads bench wants a penalty. Oh. Just finishing your check. That was it was pretty legit. Yeah, we'll tell you if it wasn't. Called on the offside. We'll tell you if it wasn't. Yep. Yeah. 308 left here in the third time is running out, folks. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, our Facebook page, Cross Ice Feed. Follow us on Twitter, Cross Ice Feed. And we know we're suddenly getting fans from other teams watching us, whether or not the Patriots are playing their team. So thank you all for tuning it's your in. It's gorgeous voice. It's, uh, it, it's, it's a real pleasure doing this for the parents, families, and fans of hockey. And Reese. Come on, Reese. Coming in on his backhand. Feeds it to the front with a shot. Wow, a save nice by save. Keelar. Setting up Turgeon. Wow. Keelar stonewalling Turgeon. Wow. Turgeon just can't buy a goal at this no. point. Keelar with another great save. He's got good cross crease movement there and just stymied him. Well, folks, they may be on the road for quite some time, but be sure to pay attention for the Patriots' playback on the podcast go to the itunes store search out potomac patriots or subscribe to our youtube page search cross ice feed one word it's sent out to center smith finds it behind him sends it back to rempe works it with backfelt backfelt over to rempe again rempe putting it up on the wing way out of the reach there for reese and rempe Trying to get it away from Zendejas. Zendejas walking into the slot, trying to get a shot away, but Rempe got in front of that one. Rempe being hooked up there, and he sends it up into the glass. Funny bounce goes right onto the stick of Zendejas. Being poked up by Reese, and Reese and Rempe are having some words, I think, about positions out there. So they're trying to communicate a little bit better, and this one's going to be ruled in an offside with 2.02 left here in the third. Two goals. We need them. Start with a shot on goal, and then we'll go from there. A shot of whiskey, too. <laughs> Irish up that water you got there. Yeah. It's just a stagnant game oh, at this point. Ever there since the go. halfway point of the second period, ever since that second goal, or I'm sorry, that fourth goal went in. Yes. Yeah. So here comes a chance for Gross across the line. A little drag through, trying to get a shot through, but... Well, he'll pick it up and send it down behind the cage and off into the far corner with 150 to play. So when do you pull your keeper? I'd say right now. 
What do you got to lose? And it'll be kept active by Alex Gross. Trying to find it off in the near corner. And up top to Edgington. Edgington will send it right down below the goal line. It's over to Gross. Gross looking towards the front. Tried to hook up Harding. It goes off the back of the net to the front. Harding takes his shot. Keeler to save the rebound. And it goes off the side of the net and goes behind the goal. Trying to move it to the front again, but it'll be picked up by a neighbor. A neighbor trying to clear it out. Not out. Edgington keeping it. Over to Gross in the slack. Gross couldn't pull the trigger. McDonald backhanding it through, but it doesn't make it pass all the Whalers up front. And now we're coming down to 110 left here in the third. Patriots need two. And Bagfeld, I'm sorry, McDonald has it. Sending it all the way through the neutral zone. No Patriots player to retrieve it. And Whipper will pick up a turnover. Whipper winds up, takes a shot, and almost takes off Keelar's head. And then goes all the way to the opposite side of blue line. Led in by Edgington. Edgington getting hit high by Zendejas to the face. Yeesh. That's the whistles away. So we close this one out. Snyder ducking out of a check from Hannon. But instead, he'll get checked by Whipper. Hannon feeding it across the ice over to Turgeon. Turgeon chipping it into the Whalers zone with 35 seconds to go here. And the Patriots really need to get something soon here. Otherwise, this is how this one will end. They're not moving the pole to keeper, so I guess they're just going to stay the course with 20 seconds to play. Marks bringing it all the way back into his own zone. And Hannon with it, 15 seconds to play. And Cameron Smith can't move it beyond a couple of Wales players. It's Brissett got in the way of that one. Snyder walking it up ahead. Here comes a chance with a backhand shot and a miss. And off the side of the net. And here comes a shot. They score right at the buzzer. Does it count? Well, I think it does. Is that Snyder that was posted up, taking that shot, and it looks like Kolkasi's down on the ice. He's injured there. Nathan Marks was involved with some altercation with him. But that'll do it. The final score, Hampton Roads Whalers sweep the weekend. Both teams taking out the EJHL South and Empire sides. This one, final score, 4-2. Let's check in with Jared Ronsky on our vital statistics on how this game finishes <laughs> out. This handshake might not go that well. Uh, yeah. And we're probably going to get a goal. Yeah, 5-2 to two it is. That'll be the final score. 5-2, final score. Hampton Roads Whalers defeat the Potomac Patriots. Whalers goal scored by number three, Cameron Snyder. His second goal of the game, fourth of the season. Assisted by number 22, Alex Brissett. Time of the goal, 19.59. That's Hampton Roads goal scored by number three, Cameron Snyder. His second of the game, fourth of the season. Assisted by number 22, Alex Brissett. Time of the goal, 19.59. Ladies and gentlemen, the third period, shots on goal for Hampton Roads, nine for a game total of 45. Potomac, eight for a game total of 25. That's generous. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. here yeah. are this game's Metro DC DJs, three stars of the game. First, the number three star from Potomac with the goal, number 19, Nathan Marks. The number two star from Hampton Roads with two assists, number 15, Dylan Woods. And the number one star from Hampton Roads with two goals and three assists, number three, Cameron Snyder. Those are today's Metro DC DJs, three stars of the game. Cameron well, Snyder's a Potomac Patriot killer. Yeah. That's the best we could come up with at this point. So, I guess with that, we'll close out this broadcast. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and stay posted. CrossIceFeed.com slash Ustream for broadcast scheduling details. So, EJHL South action between the Potomac Patriots. Hampton Roads Whalers closes out with a 5-2 loss. Patriots falling to the road. Hampton Roads Whalers. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. It's been David Stearns for Brian Shrimps and Jason Wakeley, a broadcast crew for Cross Ice Feed, saying have a good afternoon, everybody, and as always, don't stop believing.